Yo, Misha here, super excited to be bringing you this video. Uh, future videos are gonna be more like live trainings, uh, objections, sales strategies, just things that myself and my agency have used to generate multi eight figures in high ticket online sales, all right? Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be more of a in-depth kind of breakdown on how we placed Zach with an offer and how he went from making about four grand a month working nine to five to making 20 grand a month uh, working just about half the hours that he used to work. It's an awesome story and I wanted to kind of break it down step by step so that some of you can learn how to do the exact same thing. This space, high ticket online sales blowing up right now. And I want you guys to have the tools that you need to take advantage. All right. Uh, go ahead and close your tabs, put your phone on do not disturb. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video, uh, but if you lock in, you listen up, you will absolutely get a lot of value out of this. All right. Without further ado, let's dive straight in. Okay, right off the rip, just want to let you guys know this case study today is for closers, for salespeople working in other industries, and also for people who are looking to step into the high ticket closing space to make some money. All right. Um, this is a case study on how we placed a burnt out sales rep on a seven figure offer, how we trained him to close above 50% and how we got him to $20,000 months in under 120 days. All right. This was without him having to cold call any leads, manage any other part of the sales process, or spend more than four hours a day taking inbound sales calls. All right. Here's a graph of Zach's income. He started closing in January and obviously he saw some amazing growth that he did very well here in June. Um, so we're going to be breaking all this down today. Uh, first off, my name is Misha and in this document slash video case study, I'm going to be showing you exactly how my business partner Dylan and I helped Zach, a uh, burnt out SDR who wanted to replace his corporate sales job and how we helped him quadruple his income working half his usual work hours to get to over $20,000 months in commissions in under 120 days. All right. Now for everybody watching this, close your tabs, put your phone away and pay very close attention because if you plan on making a life-changing income as a remote high ticket closer, and you actually follow this formula to a T, you're going to be able to create similar results for yourself in a very short period of time. All right. Before we dive into the details of the case study, just some quick proof. Uh, so these are the exact invoices from the graph above. Uh, Zach started closing in January, 6,500 his first month. Obviously he started growing. Now he's hovering around that $20,000 a month range. And we only expect that number to be going the way up. Um, so uh, now that we've got that out of the way, let me tell you who this training is for. Okay, if you're looking to increase your income to 10 to $30,000 in commissions in the next 120 days, this is for you. If you know that you have the potential to be making and doing a lot more, but you know, you're held back by your current job or maybe your, your income vehicle, your sales job, your business, this is for you. Uh, if you're an experienced sales rep or a closer uh, selling on an offer like this, but you're struggling to find a solid high ticket offer that's going to give you the type of leads and the amounts of leads that you want, uh, this is definitely for you. Uh, let me tell you who this document isn't for. Okay, if, if you're looking for a side hustle and you don't want to start a real career as a closer, this is not for you. Uh, if you're not coachable, ready for nuanced sales training, definitely not for you. If you are the kind of person that wants to follow outdated sales strategy and you're kind of stuck in your ways, this ain't for you. Uh, and if you aren't comfortable dealing with wealthy prospects and large deal sizes and big numbers, click away from the video right now. Uh, okay, here's the truth about remote high ticket closing that nobody will tell you. It is very realistic for the average person to replace their income with a remote closing position, making multi six figures doing zero cold calling, zero lead gen, or even selling complex products. However, most people aren't capable of doing it because they don't fundamentally understand that one, no matter how good a closer you are, your income will always be capped by how good of an offer you're selling on, right? And two, these kinds of offers that have the higher earning potential, they have high expectations. They don't hire random people from public job postings or cold DMs. And I guess on the flip side too, most people don't understand how easy it is to find an offer like that, uh, especially when you can leverage other people's reputation to find yourself a placement. 
Uh, but if you're watching this, you are already on the right track to stopping yourself from making these simple and avoidable mistakes. Okay. A quick limiting belief that you need to protect yourself from. You might be asking yourself, how will an established offer doing multi seven and eight figures in revenue trust me with their leads when I don't have a track record? Here's the thing. There are literally thousands of seven figure multi-million dollar offers who are in desperate need for quality closers to close their warm leads. And if you want to be one of these closers in this breakdown, we're going to be going over exactly one, how to navigate around the issues I just touched on. Two, how we managed to help Zach do it and how we got placed with an offer where he started making so much money that he stopped worrying about his nine to five completely and he actually left his job uh, very quickly. Uh, of course, how to get to $20,000 months and beyond in about 120 days and how to do all of this without doing a single cold call or without paying a single dime to generate a lead for yourself. All the leads are going to be given to you on a silver platter. Okay, um, before we dive straight into all of that, I want to give a little bit of background uh, as to myself, Dylan, my agency, so that you know that I know what I'm talking about. All right, uh, my business partner, Dylan, and I, Misha, we grew up together. Uh, in 2017, we actually ran a door-to-door -door window cleaning business, and this was our first taste at sales. This what this is what led us to falling in love with sales. And you know, we were working crazy hours, um, hustling it out, skipping class, just doing this, knocking doors. We very quickly took over the entire market in our local area, and we scaled our team from just myself and Dylan to about 20 sales reps. Uh, we loved, you know, that process, uh, the the skill set, the strategy that's involved with building and managing high performing commission based sales teams, and. Um, you know, we had a lot of fun with it. We did it for about a year and a half uh, before we decided to go uh, different ways, um, you know, following what other people wanted for me at the time. You know, friends, family, society, all the money that I made from door to door, I put it towards a tuition for a business program that amounted to nothing. Um, but it is what it is. You live and you learn. Uh, the thing is, after tasting my first little bit of money at a young age, I always had a deep desire to crush it in business and like I was always working on different, you know, businesses, different models, hot side hustles, whatever you want to call it, drop shipping, crypto. I used to be the guy reselling expensive Jordans, shoes online, using softwares. None of it worked. Um, it is not easy building a business when you have no money or zero skills. Uh, it's just kind of a recipe for burning all of your savings. Um, but anyways, uh, August of 20, 2019, I got a call from Dylan. This was right around that time when you saw a crazy amount of entrepreneurs, influencers, you know, people selling their online programs and mentorships online, right? E-commerce, real estate, trading, you know, these people were selling skill sets that were valuable and they were selling them for a lot of money, right? Five, 10, 25,000. These are, are pretty typical numbers. Um, so we saw this, right? And after doing some digging, looking a little bit more into the business model, we realized we had found the biggest gold mine of the decade, but not in the way that you would think. Um, you know, all these coaches, they had the exact same marketing plan, right? Basically what they would do is they would run ads on, you know, Facebook or YouTube or whatever, um, and then send thousands of people to an hour long pre-recorded webinar, which was basically just a week sales pitch. Right. And, and we would talk to these businesses and we found out they were converting about 1%, if not less of all of their view, all of their viewers, right. Still making hundreds of thousands of dollars every week, by the way, a great revenue, great business model. Um, and this was before the term quote unquote, high ticket closer, remote closer, whatever you want to call it even existed. Right. Think about it this way. This is where we saw the opportunity. Imagine watching an hour long video and then right after a checkout page pops up for $10,000. Like you would have to be insanely interested to even consider doing that without speaking to a human being first, right? Like imagine the thousands, hundreds of people that would have bought if they had somebody to speak to, to answer their questions and actually explain how things are going to play out for them before they buy the product. This was the nature of the high ticket info product space for a few years. And if you're following me, you are probably thinking exactly what we were thinking. There was a huge amount of money being left on the table. Dylan and I, we started reaching out to every coach we could find that was selling a high ticket online offer. 
After sending hundreds of DMs in November of 2019, we found a coach who was willing to trust two 19-year-olds with no track record uh, with his leads. It was a 5K package. It was a one-on-one income coaching program, uh, and we were selling it at a 15% commission. All right, keep in mind, I'm in school at the time. Right? I'm in university in a competitive business program, but you do the math, you do the calculation. I, I had to take advantage of this. I wasn't going to let this opportunity slide. So here's exactly how it went for me. My first uh, taste at high ticket sales. Uh, I had about 500 names and phone numbers. Every one of these people had watched a hour long webinar, uh, but they chose not to get the 5k upgrade, at least not yet. Um, being a student, all I had was three hours a day. I got very serious about that. I did it seven days a week until I cleared those 500 leads. Took me about three weeks to get through all of them. Here are the exact numbers, all right? Out of the 500, spoke to about 150 of them. I closed 12. And, you know, actually looking back on that, pretty low close rate, uh, but I did very well, uh, at least for myself at the time. Uh, all, every deal, all 12 of those deals, except for one, they paid in full. Uh, so it was 57.5 in cash collected, about $8,600 in commissions, which is about 12K Canadian. Uh, right here's a screenshot of the first ever invoice that I ever sent out uh, for that amount. Super life-changing month um, that changed a lot of things for me. At this point, after that happened, I made the easy decision to drop out of school, leave my job, go all in on this. What we did after that, me and Dylan uh, would literally go to the Starbucks every day for 12 hours a day, seven days a week, just railing dials. Uh, we were crushing it. We were pushing like twenty, thirty thousand dollar days in revenue every single day. The coach we sold for reinvested a lot of that back into his ads, and all of a sudden we have way more leads, way more closing opportunities, and way more money coming in. Uh, so we we realized like most people could do this. Like we realized we weren't like fantastic. We weren't the best closures in the world. We had just found a really lucrative opportunity. So. We brought in eight people we knew in the area. We built our team. Uh, by the summer of 2020, we were consistently uh, surpassing million dollar months actually in uh, high ticket coaching sales, right? The the thing is, right? Think about it like this. Like these online entrepreneurs, they are absolute experts in their niches, right? Real estate, e-com, mindset, whatever it is. But they have no idea how to build, manage, and scale high-performing commission sales teams. Uh, we very quickly became one of the only sales agencies in the world that would partner with these kinds of offers and basically take over their, their sales completely. Uh, really quickly, the industry started to take notice. Uh, we started taking on more and more contracts. In other words, more clients, more coaches to sell for. Uh, I hope most of you watching this video, you've heard of Ty Lopez. Uh, we got on a call with him in fall of 2020 and you guessed it, didn't have a sales team, a massive brand, massive credibility, uh, but didn't have the sales team in place. So we locked that in, we closed that deal and for the next three years scaled his, and for the next three years, we scaled his high ticket sales teams to about 2 million a month on average. We did a lot more than that during certain periods. Uh, at this point, our reputation for scaling sales teams and developing top tier sales talent was unquestionable. When you do it for somebody like Ty, everybody wants to work with you. So that's what happened. Um, very quickly became the go-to agency for any coach or offer that needed high performing closers and sales teams. Fast forward a couple years uh, to summer of 2022, we actually reached a point where we had more coaches asking for closers than we had closers to place with these coaches, right? The term high ticket closer, remote closer at this time was popping up all over the place. It kind of started trending uh, just due to the fact that you can do it remotely on your own schedule. You can make great money and all you need is your phone. And a lot of people, um, ho hopeful people would start running ads and make big income, pl income claims and talk about how great it is to be a closer. But the thing is, almost none of these people had any kind of track record uh, training and placing successful closers, right? Here's the thing. Everything I just explained is completely real. You can make great money on your own schedule anywhere in the world using just your phone, but that all depends on the quality of placement that you sell for, right? You have to be selling for an established, validated offer, and then you can actually do very well, right? Thing is, the moment you're placed with an offer like that, with warm qualified leads scheduling every day, making less than six figures is legitimately impossible, straight up. Uh, in typical sales roles, 99% of the leads you speak with, they want nothing to do with you. They're hanging up, they're telling you to F off nonstop all day. 
just having a conversation with elite is hard, right? The reason why this space is so lucrative is because you spend 100% of your day speaking with warm, qualified leads who are asking you to call them and tell them about your program. All right, these leads, they go through a thorough qualification process before they even speak with you. Uh, any coach you'll sell for, they already have a massive brand with hundreds of thousands of loyal followers, if not millions. And any lead that you speak with, they would have already made an investment of about one to 500 on some kind of upfront course where they have already gotten value from it. And then they ask to hear more about your offer and they actually schedule a call with you filling in a questionnaire and basically explaining why they want to be a part of your program. This is your entire day speaking with these kinds of leads. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the key to consistently closing five, 10, $25,000 deals is becoming the hunted, not the hunter. All right. In most sales roles, it's the other way around. And that's why people hate sales. And that's why there's so many pushy, you know, aggressive salespeople that nobody likes out there because they're hunting you down. You want the opposite. Uh, in this space, when you become the hunted, almost every deal you close will be a one call close. Uh, thing is, these great placement opportunities where you have this type of lead quality, they're few and far between just due to the fact that the market is filled with untrained closers and random people just getting into the DMs of these coaches asking for you know leads and asking for a job. Look at it this way. Like imagine you were a coach and you were so skilled at some type of business model or, or some niche and you know, that skill was in high demand, right? Let's, let's say you spent years building your brand, you know, you pay employees, build systems, you spend thousands of dollars a day on ads and marketing to bring in these leads. You would have very high expectations for your closers, right? This is why we have so many coaches and offers reaching out to us now, because rather than taking a gamble on a stranger in their DMs, 10 out of 10 times, these coaches will come to an agency like mine that has a tenured track record for delivering high performing closers, right? This is what Zach was doing, by the way. Like he spent months in the DMs of these offers before he started working with us. Uh, unfortunately, you know, misinformed by a lot of the BS in the market. Uh, but when he came to us, uh, given our experience and track record with training and placing hundreds of people of all experience levels with lucrative offers, we knew we could help up and coming closers get the exact training and placement they would need to actually start multi six figure careers as a remote closer. All right. In about late November of 2022, Zach got in touch with us, explained his situation, explained the fact how he hated his job. He was barely making any money. They refused to promote him. Uh, he was looking to become a remote closer for a few months and he needed help. All right. That's where we decided to work together. Uh, we spent the next month training him. Uh, to get him up to standard for a seven-figure established offer. And on January 9th, placed him with his dream offer. Uh, our millionaire closer framework that we helped Zach implement worked so well for him that within three months of being placed, he closed over 400000 in total sales, earning himself about 40 k in total commission. All right, now, uh, filming this video in July of 2023, uh, on a average week, Zach brings in four to six K in commissions working 40 hours a week, right? This millionaire closer framework, this is our playbook built through years of trial and error from our own and hundreds of sales reps from their experiences compiled into one robust strategy and framework that can be repeated and implemented by anybody selling anything, by the way, to produce massive results. Okay. On this video, we decided to break it all down for you. In the following steps, I'm going to be outlining the entire process A through Z of what we did to accomplish these results for Zach. Uh, we wanted to put this out there so that you can use our playbook and start your career as a remote closer and start making at least $20,000 a month and beyond in the next 90 days. Now, here are the specific stages that we took Zach through in order to get him there. By the way, if you follow these exact stepping stones, it is impossible not to have a wildly successful career in 2023 this year and beyond. All right. Three key steps, and I'm going to be going into each of them. One, training, getting up to speed and getting ready for the great placement that you're looking for. Two, actually getting that placement, getting that job where you start selling for a big coach. And then from there, it's going to be massive attention to your growth, constantly focusing on improving your commissions, improving your close rate, and taking this as far as you can go. Three simple steps. When you kind of zoom out on the journey and you break it down like that, uh, and you start to understand the priorities in each of these stages, mastering this high ticket closing game just turns into a game of repetition, not 
constantly try to figure out what your next move is, just running around like a chicken with their head cut off. All right, so listen up. Now, let's get into how we optimize each stage of the process for Zach so that he could go from breaking out of his nine to five to being on track to make multi six figures in commissions his first year doing this. Uh, step number one, okay, applying the millionaire closer framework. Before we started working with Zach, uh, he had spent three years working as a corporate SDR, cold calling leads and just trying to schedule appointments. Zach, he would read off a sales script, he would play the numbers game, just trying to dial as many people as possible. This led to countless burned leads, hours wasted following up, tons of rejection, and low commission. This might seem normal for a sales role, but in reality, Zach did not have a strong enough understanding of buyer psychology to predictably and consistently influence his prospects to buy. So here's what we did to fix it. First, we crafted a brand new sales call structure for him. In reality, we had been using this structure for about five years before we met him. So we knew it worked. All right, this structure, and I'm gonna get into it in a second, is basically a way for you to close your prospect before you even present their offer, okay? Uh, keep your notepad out and get ready for it. We're gonna be going into it. And then two, once we taught him that structure, it was really important that we role played it out and we practiced every possible variation of it so it was natural and he didn't need any kind of scripts or, or anything to close. All right. This was to ensure that from day one of his placement, his close rate was high and he was performing right away. So the new and improved sales call structure. All right. There are 10 steps to this. This is the exact structure that we have used for the past six years. All right. Hundreds of sales reps have used it selling on dozens and dozens of different kinds of offers in all niches that has generated multi eight figures in online coaching sales. Okay. This stuff works for anybody. Get ready for it, okay? Step number one, the intro. You cannot make a great first impression twice. The key with your introduction, make sure it's the opposite of what you think a salesperson would sound. All right, be human, have a personality, crack a joke, drop your prospect's guard. Okay, step number two, the agenda. We're gonna be asking our prospect a lot of questions here. We wanna maintain, we maintain authority through the entire call. Uh, you're going to let them know right here. Hey, what I want to do here on this call is ask you a couple questions and really see if and how we support you. If I feel like I can, I'll show you exactly how. And if not, I'm going to do my best to point you in the right direction. If you do this right, you're going to set yourself up for a great call. Three, situational. All right. Uh, so this is where we start getting into the information gathering. Uh, this prospect, they come in, like we spoke about earlier, they're already warm. You want to ask broad questions, kind of like a soldier on the battlefield first. You analyze the battlefield, you see what obstacles are in your way, what advantages you have before you make a move, right? This is what we do in situational. We're going to ask broad questions, your prospects, they're going to open up about surface level pain points. It's your job as a closer to dig on these pain points and find the exact problems and why your prospect is emotionally attached to solving them. If you can do that, you're going to present your program as a solution to those problems and you're going to close. Once you found out a little bit about your prospect situation, you're going to move into vision, their dream outcome, where they want to get to. All right. Uh, very simple here. Similar to situational, you want to figure out why they're so invested in actually getting there. And you want them to start visualizing that dream state uh, because the product we're going to sell them at the end of the call is what's going to get them there. Five, after you've understood where your prospect is, where they want to be, if you're going to help them, you have to understand why they haven't gotten there yet. This step right here is going to reveal potential objections that might come up at the end of the call. And when you get really good, you're going to be able to prevent these objections right now in challenge-based questions. So that's uh, your pitching, presenting, closing, easy, no objections every time. All right, keep that in mind. Six, you're going to ask a consequential question. You're going to ask your prospect, what happens if you don't make this change? Is that something you're okay with? We want them to think about the consequences of not taking action. This is going to build urgency in our prospects. From here, uh, we're going to show our prospect the gap. Sales is all about closing the gap. Before we can close it, we have to show it. So this is where you basically just recap the entire call. Hey, so if I'm understanding correctly, this is where you are. This is you know why you're not comfortable there. This is what you don't like about it. This is where you want to be. And this is why it's so important for you to get there. But the only thing that's stopping you from getting there is the challenge you mentioned a second ago, right? Right. All we have to do from here is just close up the gap right? So that's just going to be a quick step. That's going to show your prospect you're listening, you care, you're empathetic. And most importantly, you're going to let them know subconsciously that you have a solution. Uh, from here, you've shown them the gap. They understand the exact change that they need to make. Uh, you're going to gain commitments. You're going to ask your prospect, hey, 
Are you really at a point in your life where you're ready to take massive action? Are you really ready to make this change? Can I count on you to set aside a few hours a day every single day to work on this? All right. Commitments like that. We want our prospect to say yes to all of those. And if they do, your chances of closing goes up way higher. All right. Make sure these commitments are strong and closing is going to be easy. Uh, step number nine. This is the last step before you present your program. You are essentially asking your prospect to sell themselves now. Now that the change, the gap that they want to make is super clear to them, you're going to say, hey, what exactly would you need from a support system? What would you need from the perfect solution for you to get over your challenges and get to your vision, right? This is where they're going to tell you exactly what they would need. You're going to dig a little bit deeper on it just so you're absolutely clear. This is going to help you tailor your presentation uh, once you get into it, all right? You're going to emphasize key words, key needs, um, that your prospect just gave you in step nine. You're going to be emphasizing those things in your presentation. From here, if you did steps one through nine correctly, presenting, super easy. This is going to be quick to the point. People buy because of you, not because of your product. So don't put too much emphasis on your product. Uh, you're going to spend about two, three minutes breaking down your program, how it works. Most importantly, you want to explain the process of how your prospect is going to get from where they are now to where they want to be using the deliverables of the program that you present. Very simple. All right. After you present your program, you're going to let them know how much it costs. You're going to let the silence hold for a second. Your prospect is going to be the first one to speak. And then from here, you're going to assume the sale. Any questions for me before we go ahead and get you started? You're either going to get a no, let's get started. Do you take credit card? Or you're going to get an objection. All right. Let's get into how we're going to handle those objections. Uh, once again, everything that I said to preface the sales call structure absolutely applies to this framework. We've been using this for years. This thing is money. Okay. You just drop the massive price tag on your prospect. They're going to be a little bit on guard. First step, neutralize. Hey, I completely understand. No worry. All right. You're going to isolate. You're going to say, Hey, asides from the money, is there anything else here that's holding you back? Or is it just that we want to find out what is the real objection? Are there any other objections or is it just that? Uh, after you've isolated, you're going to regain commitments. All right. We're going to reel them back in. We're gaining commitments to everything except for the money in this case. All right. So, Hey, you know, do you actually believe in X, Y, Z opportunity? Uh, can I count on you to actually use it and to show up every day and give your all to this? Okay. And if you did that, if you showed up for all the coaching and you took full advantage of our program, do you see how you would get to your goal of making $10,000 a month? Most of the times you're going to get yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Uh, sometimes you're going to get a clue on the real objection. If the, for example, someone says, if, if you ask someone, do you feel confident you would see results? And they say, I don't know. I hope you just found out the real objection isn't the money. It's not coming up with the money. It's their belief in the program that they're going to see a return on their investment. So you want to listen very closely when you're regaining commitments, you're also collecting information. Okay. Listen to how they respond. Uh, at this point, all right, you're going to have a very clear idea of exactly what your prospect's objection is. They would have justified it to you multiple times already. Now you have all the ammo that you need to handle it. You're going to evoke emotion. Now you can do this with a story, with an analogy. Um, they could just be with logic. All right. But at the same time, you do want to bring in emotion into the equation. You might tell a story of how you were once in a similar position of how you had a scary step that you had to make. You had two options and you decided to take action. It was a hard decision for you to make, but you did it anyway and you achieved an amazing result. You might ask your prospect after telling a story like that, hey, do you realize that to get to your goal, you're probably going to have to take some scary steps? They're going to say, yeah. So what makes it different? Are you at a point where you're ready to take those scary steps? you know what? Yeah, I'm ready. There's a lot of ways you can evoke emotion. I'm going to be covering that in future videos. Otherwise, this video is going to be three hours long. Um, but once you've done that, right? Hey, are you at a point where you're ready to you know, take a step that might be a little bit scary? That's your test close. Now you're going in for the sale, right? Don't forget the step. Ask for it with confidence. So what do you say, Mr. Prospect? You ready to rock and roll? You ready to get started? Let's do this. There's a couple ways you can do it here. Ask for it with confidence. Obviously, this is a summarization of uh, the exact wording, questions, nuance, but you should get the overall idea. Okay, the thing is, Zach, on his with his old sales job, like he was just using a, a crappy sales script, uh, no true structure, no intention, no strategy, and his close rate was suffering. The second that we applied this structure to Zach's sales calls, he was crushing it. 
All right. His close rate, um, well, it started off uh, at about 30, 40% over a matter of just a couple months, went up to 50% on all qualified leads. As you can see here, uh, this is a screenshot of Zach's calendar. This is literally last week, by the way, uh, of all, all those green events that you see there were closed deals at 5K a pop. All right, it was a 5K package. Some of these deals were split pays. Uh, but overall, on this week, Zach closed 62,000 in total sales. That's about 6,200 in commissions in one week of work using our framework. If you need rewind, go get down some more notes because this stuff works. All right, now, so when we, let's recap a little bit. When we started working with Zach, we trained him first. We explained our sales process to him. From here, we had to role play it, right? Understanding how to close isn't the same as actually being able to close. Every day, sales companies just throw new reps into the fire to figure it out on their own. This is a recipe for wasted leads, destroyed confidence, and most importantly, millions of dollars in uncollected cash. So Zach told us early that he wanted to make $20,000 a month before he left his job. So we basically outlined exact parameters on how he was going to do that, um, showing him you know, how to actually practice so that he would be confidently closing deals consistently from the moment he started selling for the offer that we placed him with. All right. Uh, we connected him with some of our closers. He role played for one hour a day, every day for a month. He role played every possible buyer type and objection just to make sure that he was ready for anything by the time he was placed. And this way, trial and error happened with nothing on the line, right? Four types of buyers to understand, okay? Every lead is motivated by pain or pleasure, okay? So there's move away buyers or there's move towards buyers uh, or they have limiting beliefs or defense mechanisms that cause them to slow down, which would be a slow paced buyer, or they're actually ready to move fast. They know what they want. They have a solution in mind and they're trying to get to it quickly. That's a fast paced buyer. So there's move away, move towards fast paced and slow paced. These are interchangeable. You can have a move towards buyer that's fast paced and slow paced and vice versa. Okay. Uh, you got to identify who your lead is, what type of buyer they are, because this is going to change the rest of the conversation and your approach through the conversation. Uh, with a move away buyer, you're going to let the prospects sit on the pain more. With a move towards buyer, you're going to dig a little bit deeper on what they're moving towards, figure out why it's so important to them. Uh, slow paced buyer, you're going to be spending time raising belief and building rapport. Uh, with a fast paced buyer, you're going to move a lot quicker through the call. Uh, but you're going to make sure to maintain control and authority of the conversation. All right. These are very subtle changes, but this is going to be the difference between a 20% close rate and a 70% close rate. Uh, make sure you know it. Moving into objection handling here. Uh, the objection handling scenarios that we role played with Zach, I'm going to jump into in just a little bit. First, understand almost all objections are either money objections or it's a smoke screen or it's just, uh, you know, somewhat of a lie, something just to kind of push you away to not kind of reveal your real objection. All right. Um, prospects are going to throw up smoke screens all the time. You want to know what they are, but at the end of the day, no matter how much your prospect tells you that the money doesn't matter, that it's not part of their decision, it absolutely is. It always comes down to the money. Here are a few questions to just back up that point. Okay. If your program, if whatever you're selling was completely free, would your prospects really need to think about it? Of course not. If your prospect was absolutely certain that they would achieve their dream outcome, would they need to have a three-week debate with their wife about doing it? Of course not. Um, belief level, okay, the value of your program can be raised and it can be uh, decreased as well if, you're, if you make mistakes on the call, right? These are variables that you as a closer have control over. So with that said, every objection is absolutely handleable. Uh, but easier said than done. The beauty with them, you get the same exact objections every time and you handle them using the same tonality, stories, and overall strategy. The only reason why Zach at the time wasn't able to consistently turn no's into yeses was because one, he didn't have an understanding of how to actually handle them. And two, he wasn't practicing them enough outside of his sales calls. Uh, this is every objection that we practice with Zach, okay? Three kinds of money objections. They have the money, but they're uncomfortable. Uh, they might have the money, but they don't see the value in your program, or they just point blank do not physically have access to the money. Okay. These are easily confused for each other. Get really good at pinpointing exactly which one your prospect has. And aside from that, you're going to get 
the typical, I want to think about it, or I want to talk to a third party. With the small screens, you want to get good at navigating around them, getting to the real objection. And then when you do that, you know, like I said, same analogy, same story, same tonality to handle it, right? Uh, more on that in future videos. Uh, after a month, well, just over a month, it was about 35 days of Zach practicing every buyer and objection. He had reached that minimum standard necessary to match the expectations of Zach's dream offer. And we got him started on that offer immediately. Uh, on January 9th, we got him going. Uh, the thing is, before we even started working with Zach, when it comes to landing the client, he spent four months, all right, reaching out to these offers through Facebook, Instagram DMs, zero luck. All right. He was met with two kinds of responses mainly. One, the legit offers, the big ones, they would just leave him on scene. And the few that did respond would ask, hey, What's your track record selling similar offers? How much have you closed before? What's your close rate? And so this, Zach didn't have an answer because he had never done this kind of sales before, right? So that was a no-go. Or, you know, the other offers that actually would entertain him were the ones that were like, desperate for closers because nobody would want to sell their stuff. So they would hire random people in their DM. All right, I'll give you a little bit of a clue. There is a reason why these offers don't have closers. There's a reason why nobody wants to sell these offers. You do not want to sell for some random coach that's putting up Facebook posts or Indeed posts, okay? Um, anyways, the only way for someone like Zach, who had a lot of potential, but he didn't have a track record, the only way for him to find a lucrative high-ticket offer to sell for was to leverage someone else's reputation. When we started working together, our number one priority was to connect him with an offer with the following three criteria so that he could hit his goal of making 20K a month. One, a very high volume of warm, qualified leads. Two, great commission structure, right? Where he could earn at least 10 to 15% on big ticket deals between five to 15,000. Uh, three, we were looking for an offer that was already doing six to seven figures a month in revenue. And four, top-notch systems and delivery, all right? This way, Zach could do this long-term. And most importantly, so that he could just plug straight in and start seeing great commissions quickly. All right. Equally as important though, um, obviously the money is what matters. Let's keep the main thing, the main thing. But at the same time, you know, we wanted to make sure that Zach's offer aligned with him, his strengths, personality, his values, uh, so that again, he could do this for a long time and he could actually love doing it uh, rather than settling for some crappy info offer that would burn out in a couple months and just waste his time, right? So after uh, a few weeks after we met Zach, we had found the offer he was going to sell for. And then at that point, it was just a matter of getting him ready. It was a business funding offer, which was basically teaching small business owners how to secure funding uh, between 50 to 500 grand at 0% interest. Lead quality was very high. The positioning of this offer was a no-brainer. Uh, Zach crushed it right away, earning over two grand in commissions his first week. It was a 5K program, by the way, on a 10% commission that Zach was selling it on. Uh, keep in mind, at this point, Zach is still working his nine to five. Uh, his goal was to earn $20,000 a month after he got home. So between five to 9 p.m. was when he was working. This was the math that we did with Zach. So on average, Zach would get about four leads scheduled on his calendar every day, about 20 a week. Uh, the program Zach sold for, 5K offer, 10% commission. In order to hit his goal, he needed to close 10 of these deals a week at a 50% closing rate. All right. When um, Zach told us about his goal, we worked with him to lay out a game plan on exactly how he would make that happen. Two components to this game plan. All right. Number one, consistency of input. There's two kinds of input. All right. There's the amount of hours that you spend working. All right. That's the easy one. That's what everybody does. The other one is the level of enthusiasm, intent, and empathy that you put into each and every lead that you speak to. Right. In Zach's case, he didn't have the luxury of working, you know, full time hours, eight hours a day. So that second one, right, his level of enthusiasm and intent on every single call was extremely important. All right. And that's something we communicated to him right off the bat. Um, from here, aside from that, his attention to his growth. All right. Zach's first two months selling for his offer, he was doing about two grand a week in commission, which is pretty good, but his goals were obviously higher. The thing is consistency will get you halfway there, 
Uh, but a hyper attention to your growth is going to get you across the finish line and get you achieving incredible things. In Zach's case, student of the game. Absolutely. Always asking for feedback, always looking for areas of improvement. Uh, and as a result of that, his time frame on how long it took him to get to his goal was very short. <clears throat> the thing is, closing more deals without doing more calls is a lot simpler than people make it to be. All you need to do is figure out the one customer type that you struggle closing. And then from there, turn those missed deals into paid in fulls. I'm just going to emphasize this once again. All right. As a closer, uh, your job is to become a master at presenting the exact same product to the exact same types of customer. Okay. You get to practice this conversation over and over. And the only thing that's stopping you from closing above a 50% clip is your attention to your growth. For Zach, the final boss for him to break past $2,000 a week was the fast paced move towards buyer. All right. These are prospects who were motivated by achieving more success in their business, right? They wanted more success uh, and they knew exactly what they wanted from the call the moment that they showed up for it. This might seem like a really easy buyer to deal with. And it actually is when you learn how to handle them, right? Two reasons why these are great prospects to have. One, very logical buyers looking for a clear and predictable solution to make more money. And two, they have the money that they can invest the moment that they find that. All right. There are two reasons why these might be difficult for the average salesperson. And this is why, you know, Zach struggled with them. Because one, it's harder to build urgency in a prospect who has already achieved success, or at least it's harder to build urgency in someone who is comfortable where they are, but they want more. Uh, so we worked with him on that. And these kinds of prospects, they will always attempt to control the conversation right? They'll jump on the call. They'll struggle for control. They'll try to take over. That can't happen. Over the next two minutes, I'm going to explain the two changes that we made to Zach's calls that took him from 2K a week to 5K a week, tripling his commissions in about two months. All right. One, how do you build urgency with this type of buyer? This was the first change that we made. The majority of Zach's leads were business owners doing very well, they were moving towards their goals, all right? More profit, more time, more fulfillment, whatever, right? These people, they're usually comfortable where they are and there's less urgency to take immediate action. Zach was struggling to create urgency uh, and, you know, he would kind of resort to his old ways of sometimes like using a little bit of pressure just out of, uh, you know, a lack of experience and how to handle prospects like this. Uh, so we implemented a couple subtle questions so that Zach could basically tap into his prospects' core motivations and how he could get his prospects' emotions more involved so that the urgency was created from within the prospect rather than pressure being created from the closer, in this case, Zach, right? So here's the line of questioning that we use. I'm not going to go over the entire line of questioning. If you want, pause the video and uh, take down some notes on this. But this is basically just exactly how we implemented what I just said. The key here, okay, if a prospect says, yeah, I'm successful, but I want to make way more money and I need your help to do it, right? We want to find out why that's so important to them. What's the emotional reason, right? I want to make more money is not enough to close a big ticket deal on the first call. The way that we would do it with a buyer like this is we would front load the question with positives so that the prospect has to justify his answer with the negatives of what's going on and thus revealing the emotional why, right? So, hey, man, you're such so successful in your business. You've been crushing it for so long. It seems like you're living a great lifestyle. Why is it so important for you to scale? The way I set that question up, he's going to tell me, well, it's because XYZ problems, XYZ risks, you know, pain points, whatever. Okay, gotcha. Understand. And I outline this in the line of questioning that's right here, right? The deal is closed right here. Okay, not with the deliverables, not with the terms of the contract that you offer, but it's closed when the emotions be it's closed when the emotions come up, they become fresh, and the closer creates the positioning for the offer where these emotions will be absolutely relevant to the decision coming at the end of the call. All right. In other words, the deal is closed the moment urgency is introduced. Okay. So we worked with Zach on it and he nailed it pretty quickly. It was just a couple tweaks we had to make. 
Uh, from here, Zach had trouble keeping authority, right? The thing is, every lead that scheduled with Zach, they had already gone through a thorough qualification process, and they were more than eager and ready to hear the offer that Zach was going to give them. They would basically show up and say, hey, how's it going? Listen, I'm direct. Let's cut to the chase. Tell me about what you're selling and how much it costs. Not wanting to step on any toes, Zach would give into this, skip all of the steps of the sales conversation and just present his offer. This almost always resulted in tons of delay objections, lengthy follow-up that amounted to nothing. To one call close consistently, you need to maintain an expert authority frame throughout the whole conversation, uh, controlling the conversation absolutely, okay, so that you can ensure that you can actually help your prospect. You have to be able to ask them the right questions and gain certain information for you to give them a solution that will actually benefit them. All right. If you give them authority, you won't be able to do that. You have to keep the authority. It's kind of like a doctor, right? Before you get a prescription, before they give you a bunch of drugs, they ask you questions, they do some tests, they diagnose the problem. And then at the end, they give you the solution, right? Same thing here. Uh, so this is the exact line of questioning and uh, responses that we gave Zach to hold an authority with eager multi seven figure business owners who were asking him to get straight to the point. Not easy to do. Uh, as you're reading through this, think about the tonality, think about the strength and the confidence that you need in your voice, because that really is the key. All right. But basically, whenever your prospect asks for you, hey, let's let's cut to the chase. Let's get to the end of the call. Uh, what you want to do is reset the agenda and you want to do it with the right tone or voice to basically let them know that you're in charge and that you have to go through your process before you even tell them about your offer. All right. Once again, go ahead and pause the video, take some time, read through this. Uh, this is stuff we've learned over years of experience. Okay. Uh, all this comes down to one thing for you to control the outcome of the call, for you to out control the outcome of the decision, you have to control the call and the conversation overall. All right, don't misunderstand the strategy here. You can definitely piss off a fast-paced buyer if you go way too slow. Uh, but the thing is, fast-paced prospects, they know what they want, and they will actually move through the 10-step framework on their own, right? They'll explain their situation, their vision, their challenges before you even have to ask for it. All right, be as efficient as possible, listen intently and present your offer the moment you feel confident that your solution is the perfect bridge between where the prospect is and where they need to be. All right. Uh, these two changes are what got Zach from 2K a week to 5K a week working part-time. All right. Subtle things, but they made a massive difference. Uh, from here, after Zach made certain key adjustments to his sales calls, his monthly commissions quickly rose about $20,000 a month. Uh, he experienced a pretty massive change in his lifestyle, his confidence, and you know, obviously his income in uh, just a few months. And it was important to us to use our expertise in the industry to help Zach uh, navigate a successful career. We also wanted to help him get set up for years in the space, right? Uh, to this day, we work with Zach closely. We listen to his call recordings. He reaches out to us. He's asking questions. He tries to figure out how he can take a sales game to the next level. Uh, he's even spent a couple weeks working out of our main office here in Toronto, uh, hanging out with Dylan and I, getting mentorship and, and learning directly from us. Uh, we've even done career counseling with him. Uh, we worked with him and helped him secure a management role at the company that he worked at. So in less than six months, uh, they basically had Zach start to manage the entire sales team at the offer he sold on, and he earned a small commission on all the deals that were closed, which was pretty cool. Um, you know, the thing is, like some people, they'll get complacent when they start making great income. Uh, for Zach, it was the opposite. He took it to a completely different level. Uh, like it motivated him. He doubled down on his training, his growth after he hit his goal. And that's the reason why he's going to go on to achieve amazing things in this space. Um, just to just to recap from the top, just so you can have a really good idea of how this all happened and how we got to this point. Uh, Zach re recognized about a year ago what was possible with being a remote closer selling high ticket info offers, but didn't have the skill set or the reputation to land and perform on a high quality placement. He was already working a nine to five and he only had a few hours a day. 
Uh, after training the Millionaire Closer Framework on live role plays, practicing every buyer type and possible objection, we were able to confidently leverage our network for Zach and place him with an offer already doing multi eight figures a year in revenue. After starting calls on that offer, we doubled down on Zach's training. We identified those two key weaknesses that we spoke about earlier that were stopping him from closing him more. And we worked with Zach daily to implement these new strategies that would turn his weaknesses into newfound strengths. In less than 90 days of his placement, in March of 2023, Zach hit his first 5K week with 10 deals closed on a 50% close rate, and he cleared 15 grand in total commissions that same month. Since then, Zach's monthly commissions have only continued to grow. Uh, he cleared just a little bit over 22 grand in commissions last month in the month of June. And uh, he's only going to continue to raise the bar. Um, you want to know what happened after Zach started bringing in hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in sales? The offer he sold for, they reinvested the revenue back into their marketing, tripling the amount of leads that they were getting. Remember, this is all a feedback loop. More sales means more money going into marketing. More money going into marketing means more closing opportunities, meaning more sales. All right? Beautiful cycle to see play out in real time, and Zach was experiencing it firsthand. We see this kind of thing all the time. Like Once a already successful business is injected with a trained top-tier closer, that business will do everything in their power to set that closer up for success. They'll give them all the leads and they will make sure that they are bringing in money. Trust me. Okay. Uh, it got to a point where there were so many leads coming in this offer that Zach was selling for, they actually launched three new products, uh, ranging between 35 to 50 K that Zach started selling on a 10% commission, which was awesome. Um, all of this being said, Zach had now gone from making $4,000 a month as a nine to five cold caller, basically to making $20,000 a month in less than four months. All right, this is how powerful remote high ticket closing gets when nuanced and intentional sales training is combined with high lead flow on a high commission offer. Now that you understand exactly how this process works, I have an offer for you. If you are a closer or an aspiring closer, if you are a sales rep, an appointment setter, or if you just work in sales, uh, or if you're just a person with great communication skills and you're looking to leverage those skills with an opportunity like this, uh, and you are wanting to become a high-performing remote closer that doesn't have to spend dime on leads or do a single cold call while staying above a 50% close rate, if you're wanting to build a multi-six-figure income working on your own schedule, uh, and you want to work anywhere in the world using only your phone and your laptop, We'll help you master the Millionaire Closer Framework and we'll place you on a multi seven figure offer so that you can replicate this exact process and see similar results to Zach in a fraction of the time it would take you to do on your own. If you want to see similar results to Zach and you want the same kind of training and placement, hit the application link in the description. It'll be the first one that you see and book a call with myself or my team uh, for a walkthrough on how our system actually works and how it would work for you. And if it's a good fit, we'll talk more about first steps. If not, no hard feelings either way. We'll point you in the best direction. But anyways, looking forward to speaking with you soon. All right, peace.